This is a 2008 Dodge Avenger. It has a single cylinder misfire, right? Cylinder two, and yeah, also a two, random yeah. misfire code. Random misfire. And uh, what made us do this hydrocarbon test we're about to show you is uh, it misfired really bad uh, when it was cold and then seemed to clear up. And then we noticed the coolant bottle was low. And literally, this is the first step that we did. Okay, go ahead and put the probe in there. Just your hand's gonna be famous, Cody. <laughs> Notice our hydrocarbons shooting up real high. And that's confirmed. I, anything more than 100 parts per million on the hydrocarbon number is the one that I use. Uh, there really shouldn't even be that much, but as you can see, we have way more than that. You gotta pull it back out now. Let it breathe fresh air. Put the rad cap back on momentarily. Let any accumulation of hydrocarbons build back up again. Of course, we don't have this engine warmed up. No. No safety issues here of getting burned or anything like that. But you see all the hydrocarbon levels are coming back down. Okay, good. Now go back in it one more time just as a final confirmation that our machine is working properly. Sometimes this machine acts up. You see the oxygen sensor is dead on it. It's not working. It hasn't worked in forever. And uh, yeah, that is 100% confirmed head gasket and or cracked cylinder head problem. No reason to do coils, plugs, wires, injectors, you know, compression testing, none of that is necessary. We are done with this diagnosis. All right, something else. Uh, I just had a student ask me off camera, which is a great question. Um, and that is, can we check the oil, see if there's milkiness in it? And I wanna tell you guys that the milkiness test is not foolproof. Um, as you can see, there is nothing on that stick at all to indicate a head gasket failure. And, and the reason for that is this is an early failure. It's in its early stages. So you can't use milkiness as a guide, as a foolproof guide to a faulty head gasket. Another thing we can do is we can look at the oil cap and you can see even the oil cap is nice and clean. So there's some downsides of using this type of testing. I've seen oil caps with milkiness on them it's not a head gasket moisture. failure at all. It's just moisture. So we have to be careful with those tests. Uh, absolute confirmation with our hydrocarbon test. We have a head gasket failure. What we're going to do now uh, to follow this up is the chemical test. We have a chemical kit in our tool room and we'll, we want to see how accurate it is. So Would that'll be the smoke? last part. One more thing we can add to, to this is uh, tailpipe emissions and see if we have smoke. Uh, go ahead and start it. A little bit of moisture there on startup. Nothing that would, you know, raise a red flag. There is some there. Hold your RPM up for me a little bit. Tell him to hold it steady at like two grand. I mean, we have moisture running out of the tailpipe, but nothing unusual. Uh, certainly nothing that I would look at that and say, oh, that's a bad head gasket. Uh, we did see a little bit of moisture on startup, but you know, nothing crazy. It is chilly today too. I mean, it's not like 90 degrees. What was it, like 35 degrees this morning? So, um, you know, it might be like 60 or 65 right now. So I'm gonna snap the throttle a couple times. There it is. Tell him to do it a couple more times. Pretty good bit of water coming out of there now. You see that? That's where it's going. Tell him to let it idle. Let it idle. All right, so we got a little bit there. We can't always use smoke though either, guys. That hydrocarbon test is foolproof. The smoke is not and the milkiness is not. All right, so this is the kit we're using. It is Whoa. what, who makes this kit? Where did we get this from? UView.com, combustion leak tester. Nowhere on here does it tell us what gases it's actually measuring. Uh, the last chemical kit that I did, everyone swore, uh, the majority of people said it was carbon dioxide that this uh, measures. Uh, some people said CO, and uh, my assumption was hydrocarbons. 
what I did with this same kit is I actually went over the filler neck of the gas tank. So assuming it measured hydrocarbons like we did, I, I wanted to see the fluid change and it did not. So that suggested that it is not hydrocarbons. One of my students standing next to me here uh, mentioned he has a kit that actually says that it measures for hydrocarbons. That's my preference is hydrocarbons. Um, it says for diesel engines it turns green and for gasoline it turns yellow. So that kind of suggests that it's not just carbon dioxide that we're measuring. Um, so I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know what we're measuring with this. The kit does not tell me what gas we're measuring. If we're measuring carbon dioxide, the reason I don't like that for a foolproof head gasket test is what if a cylinder is completely, completely not firing at all? In other words, that one cylinder um, is, is washing the plug out and there's no burn taking place, if there's no burn taking place, you're not going to have extra carbon dioxide in your cooling system because you need a burn to take place for that to happen. Same way with CO gases. The one that's foolproof in my opinion is hydrocarbons, which is why I prefer the hydrocarbon test because you're spraying the fuel in that cylinder it doesn't matter if you're burning it or not, you're going to pump that raw fuel into the cooling system if there's a crack in the head gasket or the cylinder head. So here's the problem though, all of our gas analyzers, they're dying. We don't have them anymore. We used to have them in every shop. It used to be an easy test and now it's not. We have to be able to rely on some other method and I just wish I knew what this actually measured. Lots of different opinions out there. All right, so I need to fill this uh, two different lines, I guess, is the solution. Can one of you guys do that for me? And then we'll get onto the, the car and do the test. Okay, given um, how much of uh, hydrocarbons we had, I don't think we need to run the car, but we'll do it just for argument purposes. Yeah, and we don't want all of it to escape. So go ahead and put that over top. And don't squeeze it yet. Did you fill that top chamber too much? Or did you fill no, it to the line? To is that yeah. good? No, okay. Um, can one of you guys start the car for me, please? Yeah, Alright, go ahead and do your squeezing. Yep, keep doing that. You can do it a few times, I believe. Move your right hand, though. Keep your right hand out of there. Keep doing what you're doing. And acor according to the it, according to this, it should turn yellow for a head gasket. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I am not impressed with this kit. I wasn't last time we used it either. It looks like it's kind of turned a little bit green, but. I mean, we were dark blue when we started. This is a pretty bad head gasket failure on this car. Yeah. All right, some other uh, uh, comments that I had from when I posted the chemical video I did was that this fluid can be contaminated. So just, just sitting on the shelf or if somebody left the lid off of that fluid, it can be contaminated. Um, from outside air and that would be if it does actually measure carbon um, dioxide and, and again I'm not sure what this particular fluid measures it doesn't tell me maybe we go to the website and, and add that but imagine making the call that's that's good enough for right now uh, as far as how many times you pump that imagine making the call on this head gasket failure with that test it, it went from blue to slightly green, and we have a really, really bad head gasket failure. So it's either contaminated fluid, or this test has variables as we were describing. If it's measuring carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, or hydrocarbons, uh, to me that's still a debate that's there. Uh, it's either contaminated fluid that we're dealing with, or um, this chemical kit is not as accurate as some people say. You just keep pumping. We're looking up on the website now what this actually measures. Because it says in the kit that it comes with instructions. Uh, they're long lost. 
Um, All right, so so this fluid, we, it's already changed color um, from the front. That's um, a yellow. It's changing pretty quickly back here, isn't it? Yeah. So we're just measuring it coming out of the tailpipe, and it, it definitely got yellow on us fairly quickly. Um, so what's that tell you about what it's what gases it's measuring I, I i don't know still but it did change color on us back here really pretty quickly huh yeah um but it's not up front you know confirmed head gasket failure where you have a tool you know what i'm trying to do is i want to i want to trust this stuff you know because i don't have a gas analyzer to take with me anymore i used to have a handheld one and um I want to have a chemical that I can trust and I'm just not trusting this stuff. Okay, we found um, a PDF from this uh, company. This is uh, www.uview.com and in the PDF um, it says uh, over here, let's make sure you guys are seeing that. I'm reading in this paragraph right here that the blue fluid turns yellow when CO2 gas is detected in gasoline engines and green in diesel engines. I wonder why it changes the differences between the gas and diesel when, when it's CO2 gas that it's measuring. Um, so what, again, I don't like about this is if you picture the scenario of a, a completely uh, fouled out spark plug in a cylinder that's fouled out from burning water. So there's water in that cylinder, or coolant. So no fire event taking place. Those combustion pressures or the pressures of that cylinder will enter uh, the cooling system and there will not be uh, an excessive amount of CO2. And uh, I just don't think that measuring CO2 is the most accurate way to identify head gasket problems. Um, the five gas analyzer and the hydrocarbon test I put a lot more faith in. We did see the gases turn yellow at the tailpipe and not so much up front with a confirmed pretty bad, right? What was the number you guys saw? Well, I saw I saw 500, 600. All right, so the first the first time the first time we did the test, it was at over a thousand parts per million hydrocarbons. Confirmed head gasket failure that this leak test didn't show very well. One last comment would be it could be old fluid, uh, but it did change at the tailpipe really quickly and not in the cooling system. I don't know the the. Um, the debate is still there on how accurate this tool is. So um, Brandon was um, messing around with the leak tech uh, tester outside of the car and just squeezing the bulb and you see it turn back blue again, which is kind of cool. Um, I, I didn't see anything about that, but there is a way that they tell you from the company, I need to be fair to this company, uh, that we need to check this fluid. And the way that they tell you to check the fluid is to... Um, to cup your hand, so to test the tool, it says by we want to exhale into your cupped hand. So you put your hand here, and I want to exhale, and it says to, um, it says to do it uh, two or three times while holding the leak tester in a vertical position. Uh, so we're going to show you guys that and see if this fluid changes color. Uh, maybe what we should do is let's dump that out and get new fluid just to eliminate that variable. Uh, Brandon, Brandon has uh, served as our guinea pig here, and we're going to test this fluid. This is new fluid now, and uh, it says three to five times for um, the test, so I don't think we have to do it any more than three times. Actually, the, the leak check or the fluid check is three times, so go ahead and blow, blow in it and... and it should be the upper chamber. Scoot that way. Good, right there. Alright, go for it. It did change green. It was blue. One more time. Yeah, I, I think it that's legit, right? Alright, I mean it turned green. So it says green or yellow in the instructions. It was dark blue and, and that definitely turned. Yeah. Um, so the fluid should be good. Uh, I didn't like the reaction on the car. And um, I wonder if we can, 
How many times did you do it before it turned back blue again? I mean, it went back pretty fast. We're going to do this test on the car one more time with the cooling system uh, topped off. This is, uh, we were talking about you know some space being in there and maybe potentially that causing some uh, delayed uh, reactions. It is turning back. Because that gas analyzer, it has like suction on it, right? It probably sucks a lot harder. Than oh no, no doubt. <laughs> See, we're doing all this, guys, because I really want to be able to trust this tool, and 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 I'm. You know, just kind of learning the variables. But yeah, look, I mean, that turned back blue just pulling in outside air. Now, I didn't see in the instructions that it telling me that this was okay to do, you know, to see if if it's still reactive. Let's do the, um, let's do the hand test one more time, see if that changes again. Because absolutely, we are measuring CO2. See the lower ch lower chamber change quickly. Yeah, it's definitely reacting to it. Okay, cool. So apparently we can. <laughs> apparently we can uh, we can use this fluid a few times in in our testing of the car, which is cool. I like that. Um, it does tell you, you know, obviously if you suck any antifreeze in, you're going to contaminate your readings. And it also says that the first chamber is acting as a filter, and it's the second chamber you really want to focus on. Yeah, it's pretty much back to blue. All right, let's go back to the car one more time. All right, go ahead and start it. You got a good, you got a good seal on that, like down around the base. Uh, and according to the instructions, the lower area. Um, is is a filter and it's the top area wh where we really want to focus and it says green or yellow and it said three to five times is all uh, that it should take for a gasoline and it said six to ten times or something like that for a diesel that is changing that is changing I can see it I s well, you know, the, the difference this time, too, is, number one, we filled the cooling system up, and so you guys were correct in your, in your assumption of maybe we're just not getting enough volume because of how low we were on antifreeze. And, um, yeah, I, I think that that's, that makes me feel a lot better about this stuff. This is five times right now. So that was your fifth time. And uh, I, I would say that that confirms for me what we're looking for, which is a faulty head gasket. So, um, again, what we're doing is uh, testing a, a, new, a new tool to me, and I want to know all the variables to it. It looks like we were, we were definitely making some mistakes along the way, which is, number one, your antifreeze level being low uh, has a factor with this tool. Uh, number two, we, we now know for sure it's CO2 that we're measuring. Um, I still, uh, just given my own experience with head gasket failures, uh, I'm concerned about the potential of, of missing a failure when you have a cylinder not firing completely. And I don't know that. I haven't done enough of this. Um, but it is definitely a lower cost alternative than using a gas analyzer, isn't it? I mean, who's going to go spend five grand on a gas analyzer to do a head gasket test? We need to do something else. Looks like this, this fluid's the answer.